Are you considering silicone breast implants? There's a new study that's out that shows there may be increased risk of certain rare autoimmune diseases and types of cancer. I'll discuss the latest research today coming up. Hey everyone, Dr. Wesley Davis back with you again today. I make weekly YouTube videos discussing the best evidence-based information to help you have the best possible outcome. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Okay, so we're talking about silicone breast implants today and the largest study to date looking at potential risks associated with them. So you might know that in 1992, the FDA banned the use of silicone breast implants due to public outcry and concerns about possible increased risk of certain rare autoimmune disorders. Subsequently, the Institute of Medicine published a study showing that there was no data that would support these conclusions. Then in about 2006, the FDA approved the manufacture of silicone breast implants again. They required that they have long-term follow-up to see if there's any evidence of any increased harms. Overall now, there have been about 100,000 patients that are followed for about 10 years. This study is the first that has systematically analyzed that data. It's really important to know that a lot of patients were lost to follow-up. Up to half in one of the manufacturer's database do not have follow-up. And then in the other manufacturer's database, they don't really have good statistics regarding how many people were lost to follow-up. It's also recommended that people have an MRI every few years to look for any evidence of capsular rupture and the MRI follow-up data in this database showed very low compliance. Only about 5% of patients had follow-up MRI data available. Okay, so there's definitely some systematic limitations to this study. However, like I was saying before, it's the best one to date, so let's take a look at the results. So there was about an eight-fold increased risk of Sjogren's syndrome, about a seven-fold increased risk of scleroderma, about a six-fold increased risk of rheumatoid arthritis, and about a three-and-a-half-fold increased risk of melanoma. There were many other diseases found in the two times neighborhood, things like uh, just overall cancer diagnosis, multiple sclerosis, other neurological disorders, and myositis. In addition, they do have reproductive data follow-up, and it showed an increased risk of stillbirth at about four and a half times increased risk, and about a one and a half time increased risk of preterm birth. It's really important to know that this study does not prove that the silicone breast implants were the cause of these various problems. Also, really critical to understand that these diagnoses were not confirmed by a physician. These were self-reported by patients. The FDA just came out with a public statement responding to the study that says that they respectfully disagree with the findings due to the methodological flaws of the study and the incomplete follow-up data of their own database. I think that they have some valid points here in their response. There definitely would be a bias towards reporting findings versus non-reporting. So in other words, if you're sick and you think that this implant caused your illness, you're much more likely to report that than if you're out there doing just fine. So probably the study overestimates the risk to some extent. This is the largest, most comprehensive study to date that is looking at the risk of silicone breast implants. The findings are similar to pooled outcome data of other smaller studies. So there is some supporting evidence that this might be in fact true. So while this study does not prove that silicone breast implants cause any of these rare diseases, I think it's important to know that there might be an increased risk. If you are considering silicone breast implants, I'd recommend talk to your plastic surgeon and consider these possible risks carefully before you have the surgery. If you have questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.